Kafka Hibino is our hybrid kaiju humanoid main character from Kaiju Number 8. He's going out and fulfilling some of his old dreams by joining the Japan Defense Force while also watching his peers chase their dreams at the same time. With this said, he's having the time of his life doing this, but we have to remember that he does have a kaiju inside of him, and this kaiju has wants and desires that we've seen come to the forefront multiple times. What is that desire? It's to fight and kill Kaiju. We've seen this whenever he's fighting Kaiju number nine, and better yet for my argument today, we've seen it whenever he fought General Esau. For this reason, I could see Kafka Hibino betraying the Japan Defense Force before the end of this story, but you have to watch the whole video to understand what I'm trying to say. Well, without further ado, Welcome to my channel. The D trope is Dalton, aka the Slice Senpai. Thanks for clicking on this video. I've already told you what it's gonna be about, so let's hit this intro and get into it. So I don't even know if I'm gonna word this well, but without wasting any time in the video, basically what I think is gonna happen is this story is obviously going to build up to the point where Kafka has to end up fighting alongside somebody that is going to end up using a weaponized number two. Now, whenever we saw Kafka go against somebody that was emitting the aura of a Daikaiju in the past, Kafka basically lost control of himself and that Kaiju inside of him just wanted to kill whatever it perceived as a Kaiju. It even said Kaiju kill or kill Kaiju, whatever you perceived it as. And whenever that happened, it basically took over Kafka and started doing everything that it could to take out General Esau because it thought that General Esau really was Kaiju number two. Now, what happens when Kafka is basically presented in that same situation in battle? Like I said, is Kafka gonna have enough willpower to stop the Kaiju that's inside of him from taking out the person that he might be fighting alongside? What if Reno was fighting alongside Kafka and Reno was using the Kaiju number six suit and at one point he emitted the same energy as what Kaiju number six would have emitted, a 9.6 Daikaiju Fortitude level? Can Kafka control the inner Kaiju inside of him that would want to fight Reno because of the aura that's, that it's emitting? So that's something that's very weird for me to think about. I think also this is a little bit more off topic. I'll get right back on the topic. Maybe, I don't know. I've already explained my point to y'all. Like y'all can basically get it from there. Actually, before I get into it, like if we're just talking about other times where we've seen Kafka just almost lose himself in a sense, Kafka even said that whenever he was fighting General Esau, like this aura feels so similar to a time whenever I fought like Kaiju number nine or Kaiju number 10. And think about Kaiju number 10 time, whenever that big bomb was about to happen and Kaiju number 10 was like, ah, ha, 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 Sheena, like you might've beat me in this battle, but like I'm setting this whole place on like, you feel me? I was about to just basically bomb the whole base of Tachikawa. But Kafka right then and there basically lost himself and whenever he lost himself, it wasn't necessarily in a bad way, but the Kaiju inside of him, since that Kaiju number 10 was basically about to explode, Kafka ran over, punches the big bomb away, and whenever he punched it away, he was like, dang, I really overdid it. And one thing that I have noticed across reading this is anytime that Kafka really says that it's being overdone or like the Kaiju mode is being overdone, a lot more times than not, it's be not because Kafka's overdoing it, but it's actually because the Kaiju's actually overdoing it. We saw it in this time right here where whenever he was fighting Kaiju number 10, not necessarily fighting, but just knocking the bomb away, the Kaiju inside of him sensed that aura from a Dai Kaiju, so it came out and that's what gave him enough power to get to that 9.8 fortitude rating and punch away the bomb. And then obviously my other time is like I was saying before, whenever Kafka is fighting um, General Esau, another example of whenever the Kaiju is basically like overdoing it is whenever he's fighting General Esau and it used, the Kaiju basically like uses the body as a distraction and it separates from the core and then it basically rebuild itself from the core and Kafka was like bro like why is this kaiju fighting like this like this is too much for me my body can't handle this so you can see time and time again 
that it's normally the kaiju that's overdoing things with Kafka's body. I don't necessarily think that the kaiju knows the limitations of Kafka's body because obviously kaijus have a way different limitation than what humans do. So that's also something that'll be interesting to see with kaiju number nine in the future. All, like obviously him getting um, General Esau was a plus for him because he gets all of General Esau's intellect. But I also wonder if Kaiju number nine's body will be held back a little bit since he absorbed a human the same exact way that like Kaiju number eight went to Kafka. And now his body is technically like limited by Kafka. I don't know. I'm just really thinking. But yeah, I'm just, I was talking. I don't even know what else I was going to say. I hope that y'all kind of understand the point that I'm making. Basically, what I'm saying is I don't necessarily think that Kafka is evil. He's not going to betray the, uh, the Japan Defense Force because like he's evil. I think that he's not going to be able to control himself whenever Reno or Kikoru or Captain Narumi or somebody else uses a Daikaiju weaponized suit and it emits that aura. What's Kafka going to do? What's the Kaiju number eight inside of him going to do? Is it going to see uh, Kikoru using like the new, the general, wow, I can't talk. See Kikoru using like the freaking Valkyrie number four suit and automatically want to attack Kikoru? Is it going to see Hoshina using the number 10 suit and automatically want to attack Hoshina? Is it going to see Reno using the number six suit and automatically going to attack Reno? Like who knows? Maybe I'm overthinking this. It was just like a plot point that I was thinking about. But yeah, we're about to get into these next training arcs, so I'm hyped. I really think that we're going to see these training arcs will happen a lot faster than what the training arc we just saw was. I think that Ihara and Reno's training arc is going to be the longest. I honestly think that like these next training arcs will be a little bit shorter than those. But yeah, let me know what you think down below. Other than that, you know the vibes. Ain't nothing changed. I'm starting to feel a little bit better, so I can probably hit that note today, boys. So, <clears throat> Peace. Nah, I'm still safe, boy.